Hello. The SAT word of the week is augment, which means to amplify or enlarge. It can be used in a sentence by saying, Susan realized she had more guests than food at her party, so she had to augment that by handing out bags of chips and granola bars. One of our SAT words of the week is dilemma. Dilemma is a noun that means any difficult or perplexing situation or problem. Using it in a sentence, Josh, whose family was struggling to pay the rent, was faced with an ethical dilemma when he saw a student unknowingly drop a $100 bill in the hallway. Hey Potagansett, just a quick little PSA from the Potagansett Tech Department. They wanted to let you guys know that they're rolling out new updates for your school-issued computers every Wednesday. And they're asking you guys to restart and update your school computers every Wednesday during your W4 free period at the end of the day. I'm Ella. And I'm Sandra May. And this is Netflix Nook. So this week we don't really have many shows to talk about because we're kind of getting to the end of everything we've watched. But we're going to do two reviews. So my review is on All American. I started the new season. We talked about that it was coming out and I've watched the first six episodes. It is really good. I would say the other seasons have been better but it's getting a little bit more intense and more cliffhangers are starting to happen in the show and I really like it. So. So my review is going to be very short because I just started watching it. My sister is starting to make me watch The Vampire Diaries. So far I kind of like it. It's not like great. I wouldn't rate it like a 10 out of 10 so amazing. But I definitely would recommend if you like creepy and romance stuff like all together, that would be a good show for you for sure. And also I just finished Private Practice which is a Grey's Anatomy spinoff where Addison Montgomery's like new practice and I just finished it it was really good and if you liked Grey's Anatomy you'll like it because a lot of the events from Grey's tie in and some of the characters like guest star and they go to Seattle and like all that stuff so I would recommend that show if you like Grey's. And our last announcement for Netflix Nook is please go on to our Instagram and put in your suggestions because we want all of you guys involved and we might even pick one of you guys to come in here and talk about one of your favorite shows. Yeah, so just DM us on that account. We might post more stuff on our story when this video comes out. Just DM us and send us your ideas. It's WPHS.news. Um, yeah, bye. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Nolan, and one of the SAT words is amiable. Amiable means uh, showing a friendly or pleasant manner. So for example, Ashley was amiable towards the new student, uh, so there's one of your words for you. One of the SAT words of the week is atrocity, an extremely wicked or cruel act. Used in a sentence, the author described the atrocity known as the Holocaust in his book. Hey everybody, my name is Will Dyer, and I'm here with Miss Sarah. And uh, I'm just going to ask you a few questions about um, what's happening this month. So, sure. what is exactly happening this month in uh, biology? Um, so, this month in biology, March Mammal Madness is happening. It was started in 2013 um, by Dr. Katie Hind at Arizona State University. Oh, and uh, so, like, what does this like consist of? Like, what is a what is March Mammal Madness really about? Um, so, it's a competition between different species, um, and it's like survival of the fittest. So, they have different traits, and they're fighting against each other to see who would win. When exactly is the first battle going to happen? It's actually tonight. It's the wild card round, um, and it's happening between the chipmunk and the red bag bowl. And where can we watch this? You can watch it um, on Twitter. Uh, so they'll have small clips posted and um, like a play-by-play -play tweeted out. Uh, and then tomorrow you can watch it on the Rodent Roundtable, which is the YouTube channel. And we haven't quite figured out what you're going to win yet, but maybe some bragging rights and a cool like trophy or something. I like that. Yeah. So, thank you for your time, and thank you for your time. Thank you. Hello. The SAT word of the week is sporadic, meaning appearing in scattered or isolated instances. It can be used in a sentence by saying, snowstorms are sporadic in warmer climates. What is up, everybody? My name is Nolan. I'm with my co-host, Brayden. Brayden, how are you? I'm great, Nolan. How are you tonight? Uh, I'm fantastic. Uh, welcome back to another episode of Underrated Artist. This is our second episode, and uh, we have a very good artist for you guys to check out. Uh, today's person is Smino. Brayden, why don't you tell us a little bit about Smino? All right, so Smino, 
Uh, his real name is Christopher Smith Jr. He's an American rapper and singer from St. Louis, Missouri, and he was the founder of a music collective called Zero Fatigue. Now, if you were to describe his kind of music, how would you describe it to a hip hop fan and music fan in general? I would describe his music as you have to sit down to really comprehend it. Like, I feel like there's a lot of there's a lot of yeah, yeah, no, it's it's very it's very intricate. It's very interesting. Um, the, one of the first times I heard it, I was uh. I was actually kind of, I caught myself back in my head because the beat was just so, it bounced so nicely. Yeah. Uh, and then real quick before we go, what are three songs that you would recommend to a new Smino listener? So the first song I'm going to say is Tempo. My favorite song has to be Coop Say Yearn. And then finally, uh, Reverend. That is a pretty good song as well. So everybody go check out Smino. If you have some artists that you want us to check out or you just wonder if we know and we should cover, uh, DM one of us and uh, we'll see if we can do it on the following week's episode. So thank you guys for watching. Back to what's happened upon Agansett. Hello, everybody. My name is Will Dwyer, and I'm here to tell you this week's SAT word. This week's SAT word is deleterious, and deleterious is an adjective, and it means to cause harm or damage. An example of deleterious is that bullying can have deleterious effects on a person. What's up, everybody? It's Nolan, and another SAT word is ubiquitous. Ubiquitous means that it's found everywhere. It's very common. So, for example, cell phones in today's society are very uh, ubiquitous. Hi, I'm Ella. And I'm Sandra Mitt. And this is TikTok Talk. So there's not really much TikTok trends going on right now, but we do have some more news and contests and stuff we're going to be doing. So this week we literally just made a new TikTok. It's WPHS.news. We're going to put it up on the screen. And we're going to be having contests. So if you send us, DM us either on Instagram or the TikTok and send us your favorite TikTok trends or anything that you want us to talk about, and we will talk about it. And we might be doing some shout outs as well. And also with the shout outs, we may also be doing things where we want people to come in and talk with us because we're only two people. We only see our point of views from shows and TikToks, so we don't always have like as much stuff to talk about every week. And this week we have a first shout out. So we're going to shout out Ryan Shields. His TikTok is at Shields, but it's S-H-I-E-L-D-S-Z. So go follow him on TikTok. And put in all of your information, DM us if you have anything, and we'll let you know next week. My name is Jacob Levine, and I'm going to tell you an SAT word of the week. It's called evoke. It means to produce or draw forth, and it is a verb. Let me give you an example. The national anthem will always evoke people's emotions. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Nolan. Uh, I actually have the chance to edit this week's What's Happening Ponegansett, so let me know if you guys have liked the editing so far. Uh, but we wanted to end this uh, What's Happening Ponegansett with these last two videos. As all of you know, last month was Black History Month, and the communications and media production class had the opportunity to make uh, a few videos on influential African-American icons. And we just wanted to show you two of those videos. They're only like a minute or so long. So enjoy, and thank you for watching. The Harlem Renaissance was a period in the 1920s where black people came together and pushed out literary, artistic, and intellectual ideas across all of America. However, the place this happened most was in Harlem. Today, we're going to be talking about Langston Hughes, a poet, a playwright, and a novelist. He was known for creating jazz poetry, which is poetry that demonstrates jazz-like rhythm or the feel of improvision. This type of poetry is still used today. My reason for covering him is because I think he's very influential for black culture in America, including his huge contributions to the Harlem Renaissance and the literary world. Some of his poetry are my favorite works I've ever seen, and I think his work is amazing. Hughes's works has always had a sense of racial pride. In every sense of media he has worked on, whether it be books, poetry, essays, or plays, he would always condemn racism and celebrate black culture. Not only did he write about his own experiences, he would also connect with other artists during the Harlem Renaissance. He broke boundaries and he destroyed the idea of what is really considered poetry. In his famous work, The Negro Artist in the Racial Mountain, he talked about the tragedy of black people ignoring their black identity and ignoring their culture. He says that black People of color should not ignore their culture and says, We younger Negro artists who create now intend to express our individual dark skinned selves without fear or shame. Langston Hughes has made a significant mark in America's history and it's a positive one. His writing was also phenomenal. Philip Randolph was an American labor unionist, a civil rights activist, and a socialist politician.
He was born on April 15, 1889, in Crescent City, Florida. In 1891, his family moved to Jacksonville, which had a thriving, well-established African-American community presence. Then in 1925, he would organize and lead the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters, the first predominantly African-American labor union. It gathered a membership of 18,000 passenger railway workers across Canada, Mexico, and the United States. After that, in 1963, Randolph was the head of the March on Washington. The purpose of the march was to advocate for the civil and economic rights of African Americans. At the march, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. would deliver his historic I Have a Dream speech, in which he called for an end to racism. And finally, on May 16, 1979, Randolph died in his Manhattan apartment. For several years prior to his death, he suffered from a heart condition and high blood pressure. Philip Randolph was one of the most important but overlooked activists during the Civil Rights Movement. His significant impact on the movement would inspire many activists like him in future generations.